On the 26th of October 1946, a group of prison guards burst into a prison cell to find one of the most evil and barbaric members of the Nazi party and Hitler's government dead on the floor. This was a matter of days and weeks before he was due to stand trial, accused of horrific crimes, and this would have certainly ended in the execution of the former Minister of Justice. Otto George Tirak got a terrifying figure. He had a number of terrible scars on his face, which made him look like a villain from a James Bond film. But he was a man whose terrifying appearance matched his reputation inside of Nazi Germany. He was known as an executioner, and a man who would ruthlessly carry out whatever Hitler wanted, and Tirak also made specific changes to the execution structure, and even added more methods of execution inside of German prisons, to keep up with the amount of people going to the gallows and guillotines inside of these specific chambers. Join us today as we look at Hitler's architect of execution, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Otto George Tirak was born on the 19th of April 1889 inside of Wurzen, and as a young man he joined the German army, and he served during the First World War as a volunteer, but he lasted until 1918 in the conflict, and he rose to the position of lieutenant. But during the conflict he suffered a number of facial injuries, and the specific details of these are not the most well known, but he was left with a sizeable scar from his mouth all around his cheek, and he was also left with a scar on top of his head. But he was awarded the Iron Cross second class, and at the end of the conflict, rather than remain inside of the military or the restricted rights there, Terak resumed his studies in law, which he had paused to go and fight years before. He then became a junior lawyer and acted on a number of court cases. However, as many people did in the 1930s, Otto George Terak was attracted to the politics of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Hitler promised to restore German and national pride within the nation, and he swore to ensure that people had a better deal in life than what they currently had. Tedak joined the Nazi party in August 1932, before Hitler seized control and power, and because of his membership to the party, when Hitler became Chancellor and later seized control of the country, Tedak received very quick and immediate promotion. He was appointed as the President of the People's Court later, a heavily Nazified court, which would deal with dissenters ruthlessly. Anyone who was accused of speaking ill against Hitler and the Nazis, or getting involved in resistance activities, would usually lose their lives after being condemned by the People's Court, with judges such as Roland Freisler ordering executions by guillotine or Fallbeil, as it was known within Germany. One thing that did allow him to gain his swift promotion was the fact that Tirak had also been a leader of the National Socialist Jurist Organisation, but on the 12th of May 1933, he was also appointed as a Justice Minister for Saxony. It was his job to bring in Nazi laws and to ensure that justice was Nazified, and to make sure that punishment was given out in line with what the Nazis believed and wanted. He did continue to serve in the armed forces when he could, and this even took him out of the position as a President of the People's Court, where he was then succeeded by Roland Freisler. But in August 1942, he succeeded Hans Frank as the President of the Academy for German Law. It was quite clear that Otto George Terak was a trusted member of Hitler's legal system, and he was seen as a key administrator who would align the beliefs of the Nazi party with crime and punishment inside of the nation. On the 24th of August 1942, he gained his most senior position, and Otto Terak was made the Reich Minister of Justice. He introduced a number of different changes, which included inspections and investigations to ensure that the ruthless nature of Hitler's law and order was being dished out by judges. This led to huge scores of executions, which were being ordered by the courts, and executioners became so skilled at using devices such as a guillotine that they could take someone's head off within 10 seconds of them entering the execution chamber, such was the amount of people who they were condemning. He also introduced a more streamlined approach to the paperwork of the courts, meaning that it was quicker for the Nazis to execute people inside of Germany and occupied lands, as he made sure that clemency applications were kept short, and that the paperwork around executions was cut down massively. This meant that people were executed within days of being condemned, some were even led from the courtroom to their executions. But Terak was also involved in the Holocaust, and it was claimed that he ordered all of the people in German custody 
who were classed as second-class citizens based on their race, who were sentenced to imprisonment of over eight years to be handed over to Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS. These criminals were then to be exterminated through labour and were forced to work until they died inside various different concentration camps and at other sites. But one of the most horrific roles that Terek got his hands dirty with was when he personally inspected execution sites to ensure that their work was being carried out to a ruthless nature and an efficient one, and it was not taking too much time. He entered Plötzensee prison in December 1942, and whilst here he went to the execution chamber, which was found inside of the courtyard of the prison, in a brick-built building. Inside this room was a guillotine which was often used, and also a thick hanging beam inside the ceiling. It would be here in which thousands would be executed during the Second World War and before, and it was also in here where many of the plotters that tried to kill Hitler in the July 20th plot were executed, with them being hanged with piano wire, and their executions were prolonged and even filmed for Hitler's entertainment. But inside of the execution shed, Tirak made sure that changes were made, and he made sure that eight meat hooks made from iron were placed in the hanging beam, so that many people could be executed at once by hanging, by executioners, making the process quicker and more horrific. That's exactly what happened, and in September 1943, there were so many prisoners being hanged on the beam due to Tirak's changes that many of these people were actually not scheduled for execution, with the executioners and prison guards rushing and executing many people by mistake. Tirak just ignored these mistakes and was not concerned about this, and he ordered that the executions continue. But as the Second World War went on and turned against Hitler and the Germans, Tirak would remain in his position, and he was to continue as a Minister of Justice, as stated in Hitler's political testament part of his will. But Tirak must have known, being a lawyer, what he was doing one day would catch up with him, that he would one day probably face an executioner for his actions. He was given the role of Minister of Justice inside of the brief Goebbels government, however Karl Dernitz dismissed him from his position when he tried to set up a government. But it was no use for him, as the Allies arrested Tirak at the end of the conflict. The Allies knew who they had in their custody. They knew that this man was someone who was responsible for crime and ultimately punishment within Hitler's Germany. They had heard stories of teenagers being executed for rebelling against Hitler, and of people being quickly sentenced to death by the People's Court, and they wanted to hold Otto Tirak accountable for these domestic executions. But before he was brought to the Nuremberg judges' trial, in which he was to stand alongside many other Nazi judges and members of the judiciary, Otto Tirak died inside of his prison cell in Senelaga. He had consumed poison, presumably cyanide, which had been given to him in a small container, like other members of Hitler's government and the SS, and the prison guards found him dead inside of his cell. However, in 1961, a posthumous ruling was applied upon the actions of Otto Tirak, and because of this, it was ordered that his widow should pay a fine of 175,000 Deutsche Marks to atone for his actions, which resulted in so many deaths and executions. Otto George Tirak was Hitler's architect of execution, and he made a number of changes to the way that the courts worked within Nazi Germany, to ensure that justice could be done in his eyes swifter and even more ruthlessly. He was a man who would not stop at anything to ensure people deemed criminals by the Nazi states were executed, and his hurried justice would result in many being executed incorrectly inside of Plötzensee prison. If he had faced a courtroom at Nuremberg, there would have been a good chance that he would have been executed, but he alongside other judges such as Roland Freisler would not make their trial due to their deaths. But despite not being one of the most well-known Nazis, Otto George Tirak was a brutal and horrific man, whose work led to the executions and deaths of thousands. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.